acquisition, then in fact it could provide really a tools uh, like an industrial revolution to provide more economic efficiency of the web because there's been some efficiency break brought off but not in fact using its full um, technical capacity. So I give you another example of in fact semantic webs uh, 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 semantic web GTID, in fact related to linguistics. <coughs> so you have different, um, in fact, GTID correspond to different type of language. So you know, in fact, that will be of different type of language. And also, when you have a trust into the metadata, then you can identify that such, in fact, text, in fact, there is a translation in none of other text. Although, if you don't have the metadata, you cannot know. And then, in fact, you will have to have automatic translation tools who can rely on the fact that the text, for example, is available already on one language. And then just starting from, just try to translate only from one language with all the mistakes we know, then in fact, you can use the fact that it has a translation in another language. And maybe if there is, you have a text which is translated maybe in four or five different language of completely different linguistic nature, then the automatic translation will be so good that, in fact, the Tower of Babel can be realized again. This is a distinct possibility, but you need to have the metadata. If you don't have the metadata, you cannot do it. So, in fact, this also completely changed the governance. Well, I can continue to make this governance on the class dot internet. That's fine. In fact, it's avoid. In fact, all these uh, political problems. The political problems arise. The conventional political problems arise when you have one resource and you cannot share. The cyberspace is completely different. In fact, you can replicate and you can share if you have the right technological solution. So, well, in fact. Uh, this, um, the, the, I can't continue to do as what it does. Some people think it's good, some people say it's not. I don't want to argue. But what I do argue, in fact, there is a possibility to open completely different space of governance. Could be independent or independent of one another. The technology is there and it can be used. In fact, this is a proposal which I put you on NSP. In fact, I do, I do propose to set up, in fact, an agency of the United Nations to implement a multi-stakeholder partnership to, in fact, make governance also to make other things. The W3C also, in fact, a role could be, in fact, fully, uh, in fact, empowered to, uh, to deal with the semantic web. And, of course, these classes should be, in fact, the governance so that the um, inter interrelationship, interoperability with other services, whether services, whether it's services which are using bind or other like bundle, could be facilitated, which is not really the case, actually. So the conclusion is, you have a DNS 1.0, which is a de facto monopoly from ICANN, there is one better It is mostly from U.S. parentage, English only. And then you have another possibility using the same software, using the existing RFC, to open competition with Net4D, which is one of the classes or one of the several classes, but any other classes. For example, if IT want to set up his own class, he can do it, and then you can see whichever will be the best. Okay, that's really interesting. It's open, an open current approach to linguistic diversity. I think this, I think the current governance has been so slow for linguistic diversity that something must be done. And also, this is very important. It's allow, in fact, technological innovation at the edge. There could be some class of people, some people presenting new ideas to better use the current DNS system to bring new ideas, which I have no idea about somebody else.
currently the system is completely frozen. You have just the services to provide one, uh, in fact, translation to one, uh, to one IP address. I think much more could be done. Thank you. So, open to questions. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi, Curtis Link from Economic. I'd like to start by correcting a few things in your first slide. Though the RFC is published by the ITF, uh, actually defines something called a domain name system protocol, which is the set of protocols that bits on a wire. It doesn't say anything about the governance structures of the DNS. Yes. It doesn't even say what goes into the DNS. It just constitutes the protocol by itself. Um, the other thing is you, you can make a claim that this is supported by buying software. You, you made an allusion to this being the software used. The DNS protocol uses two components, the main servers and the resolvers. Um, in the resolver part, uh, the bind usage is, is today below 50%, actually. Uh, sorry, the main server part, bind usage is below 50%. In the, in the resolver side, in the open resolvers that can be probed, uh, it's, it's a bit higher, but generally the interface probably in both cases lower than 50%, so it, that's that's not true. Um, coming back to... Well, speak slowly because... Right, sorry. So, the, the statistics known by the domain name survey, but the bind usage today is below 50%, so it's not the most... Oh, bind? Yes. Okay. So. Um, and the other softwares which are probably more useful, like Microsoft, does not support any other class, by the way. Yes. Um, to come back to, to your point about the, the multilingual internet, the actual DNS protocol, uh, as you probably know, is a, um, does support UTF on the wire. Uh, so it can even do non-terminated strings. It's the only protocol suite in the internet that actually can handle non-terminated strings, which is why you can do UTF in the same packet. The reason that, that uh, um, the uh, uh, the panic code and the IDNs were invented was, of course, to handle the, the conversion between the presentation interface and what's actually being sent on the wire, uh, which is quite complex in the internal size of the operating mm -hmm. systems. Some of the operating system vendors would probably have been much happier if we did send UTF-8 straight from the presentation format onto the packet, which you could do, but legacy applications don't handle it. Uh, that's, a cha that's the same challenge you will face with your proposal here. There's nothing, you will have the same exact problems with doing the conversion between the presentation layer into the, the bits on the wire, and you still have to deal with how the operating system's internal lookups deal with this, because your view is very, very simplified compared to what they actually do. Uh, I think you should mm -hmm. go talk to Microsoft mm -hmm. and Apple, etc. because this yeah. application doesn't work the way you describe yeah, it. The, the, the question is that these people were, in fact, uh, uh, mostly uh, producing these uh, DNS servers, proprietary most of them. In fact, normally they should abide by the RFCs. If they, if they should, if they discuss, should not. But what is important is that the people have the possibility to use a free software, in fact, to, uh, use, to use the, all the class and to all this possibility. But I'm not, not talking about the main sort of software, I'm talking about the internal API, APIs to the operating system. I have the applications to mm -hmm. yes. yes, you made a very, very simplified example of the URL here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's far from yeah, yeah, the yeah, usage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but what I'm saying is that you're, you're oversimplifying what yes, the URL looks like. Yes, that's correct. In order to better understand the system, you have to, in a way, um, there should be modification of the software on both sides, on both systems. Uh, yeah, and I. I have my doubts that it actually can be done in the way the operating systems deal with this today, and that's my concern. And maybe you would like to elaborate a bit more of if you looked at this, because that okay, was one of the further. Okay. A, a completely different view on, on uh, domain, uh, domain name systems and the next generation ident identity. Uh, the big problem, or whatever is discussed, if you look at the mobile providers and the internet merging with each other, uh, we have a working international convention of countries, uh, the, the whole ITU approach towards uh, telephone numbers. If you're going back towards uh, handles and number based systems. No, no, I, I, this is, is, is different. This is not under system. This is using the DNS system and uh, is, no, is uh, using domain names in that case. So, uh, let me let me okay. get to your point. The problem is, uh, whichever way you look at it, you are trying to handle the multilingual approach with with character sets. Why character sets at all? Because now with with search engines and other metadata repositories that is uh, that are already available, 
let us go beyond the dns uh, conversation altogether let us get into a mode where we are able to identify content for itself i mean i mean governance of which dns system who if if un or some other body wants to set up multiple uh, competing uh, metadata repositories let them set it up because i don't think trying to fix every operating system every uh, resolver every um, internet service provider I, i we are a very large internet service provider in in, in india we, uh, i can comes and tells us hey go to dnssec it's a big thing for us like 35 40 places we are running djb dns it it's working for us fine why why you want to fix something that's not broken Yeah. I mean, it's broken in, in that sense, but they, they could be alternate approaches to fix it. The, it, it, the, the whole philosophy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, I, this is. I've heard this stone face six is not broken. Um, actually, I don't know if it is really working that well. And uh, politically, there have been a lot of people complaining about the control of these root servers by some authorities. So. There is um, an, a request by many stakeholders to have, in fact, different types of uh, root servers that are not under the control of one authority. So, technically, yes, it may work, but politically, no, it doesn't work. But now, even for the IDN, I don't think it works, and it's so much delays. And I, so I have big questions of uh, this is going to work ever uh, for the IDN. And secondly, for example, the position of proposing new idea is completely frozen because you have to to pay large fees to propose new ideas. So I think it is also both a technical problem, but also political problems. Everything is mixed together. You cannot separate uh, all the, the issues. So anyway, there are people who are dissatisfied with the, the current uh, system. With, uh, uh, in fact, anyway, yes. Well, yeah, uh, you know, um, I have two questions. The first one is from an end-user perspective. Yes. You know, from the 1.5 billion internet users, 99% want to have it as simple as possible, and they are, um, you know, have certain experiences how it works. So my question is. What would it mean for the end user, uh, you know, to switch to uh, this uh, system? What you then, what you have called DNS to to zero? Yeah. That means how you see um, the potential for confusion, and what would be the extra value for the individual end user? Okay, good question. Um, I will say that the extra difficulty will be not that much because we had another field. Now search engine will search on all the systems. So when you make search, there will be this one class and other class doesn't make much difference. Now I will say that on the terms of the semantics, um, GTLD, which is a value added which I propose, is not necessary if you have no class, then many people can do many things. On the classes which I propose, then I had a value added. It is the trust into the metadata, and then the trust of the metadata will completely change the way. In fact, the search are being made, and empire are being built. For example, Google is based solely on a very smart algorithm for the search. The other search engine has not been has not been able to do replicate this algorithm. Now, if you have, in fact. The trust into the metadata, the search will be much more, in fact, accurate, and it will enable ma machine to machine, in fact, uh, communication. So you see that the economical implications are huge for the business and also for the users. But it means the extra value is that you say you improve the search, but uh, it's, no, it's not. Identical. It's not only that. In fact, since you have the trust into the metadata. Then, in fact, you have, in fact, one program we can interact with the others. I was just discussing recently into in in, uh, in Switzerland. 
where they have different language. In fact, they have to rely on metadata because one field is, is uh, you know, corresponding to different language in, in the same country. Yeah, but let me ask if the end user is confronted with this type of competition you propose. Okay, for no, example, what the end user, because if I go elsewhere and say, okay, I have two different alternatives, then I have to understand two different systems, and then I can well, have a choice. In, 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 so, uh, in, in, fa in fact, this is different class, this is another way. Now, I can as propose many domain names, so when you have many GTLDs, so in fact, there has been brings many confusion if there is many GTLDs. Now I propose classes where in fact people can propose other GTLDs. What the heck? There will be more, but uh, in fact there will be in fact less uh, competition for a scarce resource because there is 30,000 classes. So I think the, the competition for resources will create artificially high prices. In fact, will uh, will will be in, uh, competition is good, is good. It's open the system, so we we'll have many people using many different domain names and with new ideas. Okay, uh, and this brings me to my second question: the financial aspect. You say, okay, the World Wide Web Consortium should benefit financially yes. from from selling this. So, isn't this creating another money making machinery for uh, for an alternative this, body? Uh, this is my personal opinion. What you see is that the people are benefiting from the web and not for the internet. I've been using the internet when if we're using FTP, Telnet, and so forth. The people are using the web. And which organism is reaping the benefit of the web? Not the blue tree The one who is handling simply the domain names. So I believe, and in fact, I say it's my personal opinion, but it is shared by some so of the end users. Has I, 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 think, I think, in fact, there'll be some, in fact, money going back to the people who are really working to improve the web and not yeah. simply benefiting from an existing situation. But who has to pay the bill at the end of the day? The end user. No, okay. For me, 30,000 classes, it depends. It's possible to make it free. In some governments, for example, you can have free, free domain names. So it depends. How you can ensure this, that it will be free and will reduce costs for the end user? Then the cost for the end user will be that is on the part of the people who are bringing the resource for the net. The, the cost for the end user is absolutely zero. They have the access to different resources. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes. Francis, can, can I just uh, pick up the end of the discussion, your discussion with Wolfgang and ask about uh, another part, uh, another participant of this uh, story. You have mentioned about the political aspects, you have mentioned about the technological aspects, uh, Wolfgang just mentioned about the end user uh, aspects and there is also one large community which need to buy in your proposal i mean the uh, huge community which uh, supports the dns servers and uh, who provide uh, uh, open source or proprietary uh, so, uh, software for uh, plugins to the, uh, the browsers etc for for this uh, community uh, what do you think uh, how much it will be cost to implement such kind of software, to manage it, to support simultaneously different, uh, different uh, kind of the uh, uh, DNS systems. And uh, the question is, uh, what do you think? Um, because uh, you are to, uh, talking about the monopoly of ICANN. Uh, monopoly, as usually we uh, have the standard uh, point of view, but monopoly is a bad thing. But maybe this bad thing give a chance to ICANN to support a workable system which is quite satisfactory for the billions of users. And this workable system uh, managed because this is a monopoly. Can we uh, build up another different kinds of the uh, workable systems and how we can manage this, uh, this uh, part. So the question is about the managerial aspects and involvement of the uh, technology community to, to support this idea. What is your point of view of that? Okay, uh, this is a good question. Um, in fact, there is a possibility. This will depend on much from the bind which is maintained by the IEC as well as they implement fully the RFC and we have the different classes 
the full feature of different classes and root servers which are enabled. And then it's simply a question of upgrading bind and each ISP, each bind is using, in fact, uh, the latest version of bind. Okay, this is the simplest way. As I I see doesn't want to hear about that it, even it is within the, the RFC. And then you have to make what they call in the, um, in fact, uh, in free software to offer a different version. And then it will up to the people to use it or not to use it. Now, if the people see more added benefit to using this version of of a software which is uh, uh, a resolver, then they will use it. Otherwise, they, they will not. This is a, a political question. Now, for in countries, um, I'm thinking, for example, uh, countries are using completely different script. In fact, an added value of the, of the users, in fact, they can use a class which is completely with only their script, natural script. So you have a value added or to the, to the user because, in fact, they don't have to switch keyboard or anything like that because they will be using a class which is adapted to their own script. So it will be, for example, Russian, it could be Chinese, it could be Japanese, and so forth. So you have, in fact, and then we are talking about billions of people. So, um, so this is one aspect. The other aspect is um, what I believe is the governance, who is going to attribute and not, because this is one of the aspects which is left in the, in the shadow, who is going to attribute these classes? The question, this, is the, this is an open mark, an open question. I don't have the answer for that. So who is going to make this meta governance? It's really in accordance with your proposal, it will be ICAD 2.0. No, no, it's, uh, yeah, 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 that's possible. Yes, yes, that's possible. <laughs> Depends. That they depends on each structure. So, is there is any more questions? Since I'm the <laughs> also the speakers and the and the organizer. Okay. So, okay. Oh, Tatiana. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Please. Um, so, I'm not a technical person at all. We, do, uh, we talk very much uh, about technical aspects of internet and internet governance at this forum and outside this forum, but for me as a manager, pure manager and, uh, and a journalist whose task is also to promote ideas, to promote concepts, to promote solutions, it is very important that all stakeholders who would help would understand all the proposals very, very clearly and very, very well. Uh, I would uh, just quote you, Francis. You said things move so slowly and something must be done. One of the things to be done is just to explain whatever you are explaining, whatever you are proposing, and also what Bob has um, presented here to different stakeholders. Can you remember our June uh, seminar workshop in, in Moscow? Uh, Francis came to Moscow just to, to uh, present the, this proposal. And we collected several people from different um, groups, from, from the government, from business, from the civil society, and from academic community. And for all of us, it was extremely uh, difficult to understand the idea because we really need all, uh, all the things you are talking about to explain in a very simple way. And only in this, uh, in this case, when we understand everything very easily, we can help and we can, um, we can um, discuss in, uh, quite productively. Uh, we could not move so much after, after this uh, workshop because we really need uh, much more discussion and explanation. So, and my proposal, probably my idea is that the Internet Governance Forum really lacks promotional, uh, promotional effort. Probably we need some kind of uh, topic uh, uh, within the IGF just to collect people like journalists or like those who can popularize ideas to get together and really uh, select productive ideas and put them in, in a popular way. 
just for the people from the government and from the society to understand and to help uh, to resolve all these questions. Yes, the same is so. In fact, you have two communities. There are the people, the technical communities who are writing the FCs, and you have the politician, and, and they don't understand what's going on. They don't support decision makers. And uh, people who are writing sometimes the RFC, sometimes they don't measure up also the political consequences of what they write. And it is true that, in fact, Lessig has written, and I completely agree, it is the code. And the code is really a legal code, in a way, of what the program is going to do and the governance related to the program, what the program is doing. And until this bridge is, in fact, uh, uh, this uh, divide, in fact, of competences is is bridge, in fact, will have facing always the same situation. And will have, in fact, political conflict and uh, you know, heated statements. When, in fact, the, the, the question could be solved in a much better, much more peaceful way is a simple technical solution. The cyberspace is not a space where the resources are limited. It can be unlimited. And the politics are completely different in this space. So if there is alternative system we can coexist, then it could be a competition between one and another, and then the people will use it or not use it. It's, as, I think, much simpler than, in fact, the fight for uh, resources which is scarce. Now, what I think is bad is some people try to make it a resource which can be shared to make it scarce for financial and political goals. So this is sometimes. But if there is alternative system, then new ideas, new, uh, in fact, uh, companies could set up their own, uh, propose their, 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 in fact, their uh, the, new, uh, the new idea always has been said that the innovation is at the edge. So let's create the edge and let's see what's going on. So if there is uh, any other... Okay, it's quite six o'clock. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Bye.